You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Gold, crude oil, corn, soybeans, and more. With so many tradable products, the futures options market can be an intimidating place. How can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Welcome to This Week in Futures Options, the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace. Each week, we'll break down the top trades, hot products, volatility explosions, and much more. This Week in Futures Options streams live, so be sure to check out our live stream via the Mixler app. That's M-I-X-L-R. Or join our live chat room at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. Whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs, this week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This week in Futures Options is brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. And now, get ready to break down the latest futures options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Let's kick off the new year with the first episode of This Week in Futures Options, what we call around these parts, TWIFO. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the TheOptionsInsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting, at least we tend to think so around these parts, and we're not biased at all, even though we've been doing it for now 16 years. Yes, this January, 16 years. Crazy to say out loud. 16 years on the old Options Insider radio network. Thanks to all of you who have been a part of it along that journey, whether you were there from day one, the hardcores, the hardest of the hardcore, back in January in 2007, all the way through to the legions, the literal legions that are joining us these days, especially for Twifo. Twifo getting a lot of love in the second half of last year. It's always been a popular show, but people obviously discovering it new and en masse towards the end of last year. So welcome to all you new Twifo listeners as well. Remember, if you like what you hear and you're on the on-demand side, all we ask is that you keep rating and reviewing it. Clearly, clearly there is a direct correlation between you folks going out there, taking the time to rate it and review it, and new folks continuing to discover the show. So we do appreciate all of you who take the time to do just that. And of course, if you want to go above and beyond, you want to join us over there in the pro. A lot of great stuff going on in the pro, including just gave away on our last show our latest pro trading crate. If you're active in the pro for the month of December, you were automatically entered into the pro trading crate. So congratulations to the winner, Eric Sanders, over there. You were chosen by the Rock Lobster all people out there so intriguing stuff there again all you have to do to win the pro trading crate each one bespoke each one completely awesome if i do say so myself don't just take my word for it look at all what people are tweeting about on our twitter handle to see what they've gotten in their pro trading crates everyone unique and everyone pretty freaking awesome <laughs> no small effort and expense on our part to go through this for you folks but we like you folks over there if you want to join that part of course get exclusive shows live access 
all kinds of fun stuff, win the giveaways, theoptionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go. Or for you cool cats, you want your own URL slash secret club as we keep on rolling with the first ever for the new year of 2023 movers and shakers report. It's time to find out what's rallying on the light side and falling to the dark side at CME Group this week. It's time for the Movers and Shakers Report. Oh, I see. Uh, looks like Mr. Sanders has joined us in the live. He says uh, he wasn't listening live to the last show because he's working, but he has, he has to have one because he had Portillo's for lunch. Yeah, that usually does help. Portillo's. A big, a big winner here on the network out there. So congratulations to you, to everybody else out there who uh, who joined us for the pro. A lot of new listeners over there joining us in the pro. Uh, I know towards the end of the year, a lot of people were chiming in. You wanted maybe a little bit of a break from family and friends. You wanted some exclusive content. So welcome to all of you as well as, of course, to all of you who who've been down from day one, as the kids say out there. Let's keep on rolling. Let's see what's lighting it up out here in this first week of the new year and to say it's a red week is kind of putting it mildly it looks like it's roughly 80 20 i think if we wanted to we could maybe get about looks like about a top eight or so i don't think we can even do a top 10 because there's just not enough green out there listeners it's mostly red this week so since there's not a lot of a lot of green on the screen we shall start there it is still the holiday season it is still kicking off the new year let's try to keep things positive as long as we can here on the show. So let's go to the light side. By the way, funnily enough, how long have I said now are three frequent offenders, right? Bitcoin, Nat Gas, and Lumber. And guess what? All three are represented here to kick off the new year. I was kind of just wondering, maybe we should revisit that list. Nope. They all have rejoined us here to kick off the new year. Just to remind us that those three are still the movers and shakers out there. To the light side we go. Number five, the Ultra 10-year up. 0.83%. That just goes to show you that uh, how light light the upside is this week, listeners, because 0.83%, not even 1%, that gets you to the number five spot, the ultra tenure. Number four, still hanging out in soybean meal. This one's been popping up on our radar quite a bit over the last couple of months, and it's number four today, up 1.44%. Number three, we're going out to the end of the yield curve, the 30-year, up 1.54%. It was number four in the other direction last week, off two and a quarter percent. Number two, the ultra (laughs) 30-year, so still hanging out in that far portion of the yield curve, up 2.18%. It was number two again last week, off number two in the other direction, off 3.05%. And number one, our first of our three frequent offenders here this week, Bitcoin, up 2.78%. It was number five in the other direction last week, off 2%. So all of our light side winners this week, pretty much, well, not all, most of them were all in the dark side last week. So maybe a little bit of a mild turnaround for them. And again, that top five is about all you can do. Like number five is already 0.83%. So you're already getting kind of light doing a top five there because the rest is all dark side this week, listeners. Uh, Number five, our second of our three frequent offenders out there. It's lumber off nearly 6% this week, off 5.98%. I saw our buddy used to be on the show uh, quite a bit, Mr. Sean Smith at the FIA conference a few months ago. I asked him how his fence is going. Remember he had the, he had the fence watch. He was so obsessed with the price of lumber because he had to build a fence (laughs) and he was stunned at the cost of it. he said he bought it at a better price. It still was kind of high. He thought, but he ended up building his fence and he said he, he has gotten a lot of joy out of it. So all of you who are wondering how Fence Watch ended, he did build it. Not quite the price it is now, but a decent price nonetheless. Uh, number four, still going back to the beans. The beans just have a firm grip on us these days. Uh, soybean oil off 6.13%. It was number five in the other direction last week, up 3.8%. Uh, number three, we've got lean hogs off 7.19%. Number two, heating oil. So going back to energy off 8.89%. And maybe, given the headlines out there, you could probably guess what our number one dark side mover is this week. Takes a lot to take the number one dark side crown this week because it is a pretty dark side heavy week. But it's Nat Gas, our other friend in the frequent offender slot, off 15.4%. A lot of things combine in to weigh on Nat Gas. Usually it's a seasonal conversation. There certainly is a lot of that going on 
unseasonably warm in a lot of the U.S. outside of that quote-unquote once-in-a-generation cold event we had about a week ago, which turned out to be not much unless you count really the air traffic entanglement that it caused. <laughs> outside of that, it's been almost summer-like in portions of Europe as well. So all that really crushing demand for nat gas, oh, there's some, some disruptions here with help keeping us from shipping a lot of our demand overseas all that combining to really just weigh on that gas again off 15.4 percent and it was also number one to the dark side last week off nearly 8.7 percent so a rough couple of weeks for nat gas these price levels this is starting to be the nat gas we used to know and love here on the show a three dollar handle so i think we'll head out there first actually you know before we get to nat gas before we get to nat gas let's it is the beginning of the year, so we have to sneak in some additional beginning of the year data for you listeners, because this is the time of year we like to do it usually the beginning of the year and then the middle of the year as a bit of a checkup to see how things are trending outside of just the volume numbers and the volatility and everything we analyze here on the show week after week. So that's the hard empirical data. What if we take that approach and extend that to, let's say, broader trends and Google Trends is a good way to measure that, listeners. So outside of the direct trading volume, let's look at some of the Google Trends data that is applicable to this show. Let's start very broad and then narrow it down. Let's go to futures first. They are, of course, the underlying for everything we're talking about here on the show every episode. And futures, again, if you're not familiar with Google Trends data, they list them at somewhere between 0 and 100, 100 obviously being the apex of search interest, 0 being obviously the nadir. And... The graph is going to show you how it evolved over the course of the past year. It usually does it. The data points are by week, not by day. And the high for interest in future, straight up future. That's a pretty broad search term. Other things could be lumped in there. So we're going to drill down even further. But we'll start at the broadest, the broadest aspect of the funnel. February 20th to 26th was the high, pinning the needle for interest in future searching. Again, that was kind of a topsy-turvy period last year that was of course right when the invasion kicked off right in the middle of that period so maybe understandable a lot of these names like natcast are talking about now we're starting to get topsy-turvy wheat as well a lot of a lot of action out there so maybe not exactly surprising if i had to guess a period i probably would have guessed that maybe a little bit later maybe into march because we started to see some of those ramifications start to really be felt in march but february 20th to 26 was the high the low was a 14 And that is uh, pretty much right now, though that said, that is obviously very seasonal because this number, the interest in future search was a 41 just a week ago. So obviously end of the year, this stuff falls off when it comes to the holiday there. So let's take it more about a 41, still roughly 40% of the interest it was back in the apex back in late February. Let's keep on rolling. Let's go down the funnel a little bit. Let's go to futures options more near and dear to our hearts here on the show. And this one had a more topsy-turvy graph, bounced around a little bit more during the year. The high for this one actually came on October 23rd to 29th, so an interesting period, far away from that invasion period. I think a lot of people would have assumed would have been the high for the year. And the low, again, right now, we're at about a 35. So we've gone from 100 in late October to 35 right now. So pretty much a third of that level of interest that we saw back then we flirted with high 80s into the 90s though a few times last year late january and may like in august again so this was a very topsy-turvy graph over last year let's drill down even farther listening it's more relevant to us let's get to futures options trading this isn't going to be that popular of a search term it's very specific but nonetheless indicative for our purposes here on the show the high for futures options trading interest. Now, this is very surprising to me because if you listen to some of our other shows on the network, Volatility Views, the Option Block, you know, all the shows where we break down Google Trends data outside of this one. The low for the year for a lot of those options trading, those types of searches, came the week of November 20th to 26th. When was the high for search interest in futures options trading? The week of November 20th to 26th. It's almost the complete Polar opposite of the options trading chart. So that is a little strange. I have to dig into that a little bit further, see what could be behind that. Probably also the fact that there aren't as many data points for this one as there are for something even like options trading. We're going pretty far down the rabbit hole here now. By the way, if you're wondering what are the top five states in terms of interest per capita, 
for futures options trading search interest at least a uh, number five new jersey so new york adjacent makes some sense number four florida so uh, we're hanging out there i guess a lot of retirees uh slinging those futures options <laughs> number three illinois makes some sense probably thought it would be higher number two california heading out to california a lot of energy related uh, action going on out there and number one nyc still in intriguing out there of uh, the low again hit the hit its low of zero multiple times during the year again you don't see that too often another indicator that there aren't a lot of data points for this graph right now it's at a still a pretty low level of 21 so it's it's fallen from late november 100 to 21 right now so intriguing stuff out there if you're wondering about some of the products let's get into some of those really quickly let's go to crude oil first Products, I think you're probably going to see a strong correlation between the price action and the search interest. And that's kind of what we see here with crude oil, for example. Take a guess when the peak, the apex for search interest was in crude oil. If you're guessing a little bit after the invasion, you'd be correct. The week of March 6th through 12th. And it has pretty much fallen off. It fell back to about, looks like about a 35 or so, a few weeks after that period, actually. So we had that huge spike up right at that period. And then right back down again. And then it's been kind of just drifting gently lower ever since. Right now, it's down to about a six. So seasonally very low. Nobody's searching for crude oil right now. Again, maybe an indication of where we're hanging out from a price level perspective. Our frequent offender here, Nat Gas. How's that one hanging out? Uh, the peak for that one, again, the exact same week, March 6th to 12th. Uh, the low was a 60. And that came... On November 20th to 26th, so the same week that was the low for options trading interest and the high for futures options trading interest was also the low for natural gas search interest. That's very strange. The other interesting thing about nat gas is unlike crude oil, which shot up and then shot right back down again, interest in nat gas has remained steady. It's been over a 75, looks like, for most of the year, so... People have been searching for natural gas a lot this year. That's why it's one of our most frequent offenders on the show. That's why it's talked about on the show quite a bit. You folks very clearly have natural gas top of mind. In fact, it looks like it was about an 80 or so just a week and change ago, and now it's down to about a 60 again, that seasonality kicking in there. So you folks have been obsessed with nat gas all year and for obvious reasons. In fact, getting into, looks like that October time frame, we were starting to flirt with not quite 100, but getting close to those highs again in the 85 to 90 range. So a lot of action out there in Nat Gas. By the way, if you're wondering what are the top regions for Nat Gas, you can probably guess them. Number five, South Carolina. Number four, Georgia. Number three, Alaska. <laughs> Takes a lot of doing for Alaska to show up on these lists. Number two, North Carolina. Number one, Oklahoma. You probably could have guessed. I'm surprised no, uh, no Tejas in that one. That's kind of interesting. Uh, let's look really quickly. Our old friend Sean, he'll like this one. Lumber. Lumber, one of our other frequent offenders. The high for search interest in lumber, June 12th to 18th. Very interesting. And the low right now at about a 37. Again, seasonality kicking in because it was about, about a 55, just about a week and change ago out there. This graph has stayed pretty steady and pretty high, like mostly above 75 until just the last couple of months when it started falling off a bit. So. Intriguing stuff. You folks are clearly interested in lumber throughout most of the year as well. And here's a name. This is just kind of a fun one to throw in there. Listen, also one of our three frequent offenders. It's Bitcoin. Let's see how this one shakes up from a Google search perspective. And the apex for interest, search interest at least, in Bitcoin came the week of July 12th to 18th. That's surprising. Usually you see these graphs correlate pretty strongly to the price action. And yet... Bitcoin at that time was only about $22,400, so it was well off its highs. The price high for Bitcoin came around March 30th, so many months before the apex for this. In fact, at that price high for Bitcoin, looks like this graph was close to a 30. So very low search interest at the time when Bitcoin was hanging out near its high for the year, north of $44,000. So intriguing stuff. The low for this graph, we have a tie. It came, it hit 20 twice, and that was right now. So again, seasonally light, as well as the week of October 30th to November 5th. Both times it hit 20 and then bounced right off. So intriguing stuff for that. I'm very curious. I would like to know where the top sub-regions in terms of states by search interest for Bitcoin 
Number five, Idaho. Interesting. I think there's a lot of mining activity out in that region. When we first started running our crypto rundown program listeners, we were looking at the data coming back on that show, and it was all areas of the country that we never see with our other shows because no one lives there. It's far eastern Washington and rural areas of Kentucky. And I quickly realized, oh, those are big mining areas, and that's why a lot of people are tuning into the show. I think we're seeing something similar here with Idaho cropping up as the number five top interest by subregion area for Bitcoin. Number four, Florida. Florida is at number four on most of these charts. Interesting. Uh, number three, California. Number two, Hawaii. And number one state for interest per capita by search in Bitcoin, Nevada. I would not have guessed that either. Intriguing stuff. And now it's time for us to sink our teeth into it, listeners. It is time to go to a little bit of the old energy. It's time to tap into the deep options well of black gold, Texas tea, nat gas, and more. It's time to talk energy. All right, everybody. Welcome to the wonderful world of energy. You folks know where to go to find us in the drop down listeners. See me group.com slash twifo. Uh, then go to that asset class drop down. We're going to go three slots to energy and then over and then down three more in the product family to nat gas to find our old friend. The frequent offender, clearly, just given the search data, a name and a product you folks have been fixated with all year long, only proper that we kick off the new year talking about Nat Gas listeners. Coming into showtime, 372. Man, it has been a long time since we've seen a three handle in Nat Gas. And there was a time when Nat Gas broke through three to the upside. That was a huge deal. Nat Gas wasn't really the sexiest of products for a while there. This past year has kind of transformed that somewhat. We got into ranges that were just outside anything anyone would have expected. And 372, starting to sound more like the Nat Gas of old. Still a little rich, north of the three handle, obviously, but compared to a 10 handle, or people were worried about a 15, trading 15 calls not too long ago, a three handle, much, much, much more in the normal trading range. Speaking of normal trading range, the volume is still there, right around 400,000 contracts on the tape right now. So you might have expected a little bit of a light start to the trading year. Everyone's maybe still coming back from the holidays. A lot of people can't get back. All those travel snafus I mentioned earlier, still gumming up the works for a lot of people. But no, about 400,000 contracts on the tape. So Nat Gas up to its old action. What is lighting it up right now is the March contract doing 24% of that 400,000 contracts. The March contract, by the way, is at a 346, so almost 30 cents cheaper <laughs> than the front Feb contract right now. So again, that seasonality kicking in, falling off. Let's see, how cheap do we get on this term structure? Looks like 343 May contract is, is the lowest we get out there for. Yo, let's see if we go really far out. No, let's get they get down to about a 356. Go out to this time next year. So no, it's it's in the it's in the May contract, listeners. So intriguing stuff out there. Lots of three handles in Nat Gas. Did you have a three handle on your bingo card for Nat Gas? Or you maybe long some four puts? If so, you probably got a bit of a smile on your face out there. What's going on in this March contract in Nat Gas? has 49 days to go. Well, let's find out. The Vol, still frothy at an 86. So if you're kind of wringing your hand saying, where am I going to find Vol to kick off the new year? Nat Gas, still your friend. It's up nearly four points this week. Seen a lot of action on the skew as well. Last week, the puts were pretty much flat, 0.4% discount to the at That is meaningless in that gas. That gas has seen wild swings, so pretty much flat were the puts. This week, nearly 5% cheap, so a pretty decent little swing there on the puts. The calls, not much of a move. Last week, the calls, 3.3% bid. This week, 3.1% bid. So the calls pretty much hanging out on the puts getting cheaper this week that makes some sense of course we are blowing through strikes to the downside when that happens you tend to see those lower strikes come in to skew kind of rotates a little bit around the at the money as the at the money goes down you see those farther out the money strikes start to get a little bit cheaper and the ones above it i should say they rotate and they get a little bit pricier that's kind of what we saw except the calls didn't really catch much of a bid this week in terms of action bit of a battle listeners but the number one most active contract this week is actually all the way out there in October. And it's the October two puts. <laughs> we haven't seen this strike lighting up our tape in quite some time, listeners. 
And it's all trading today. Remember, we have a truncated trading week. That's another thing. We had a short trading week this week, and still Nat Gas putting up 400,000 contracts. You folks are coming to play in Nat Gas this week. Looks like most of it is today. 12,465 of these two puts in October have gone up today, listen. That's close to 13,000 have traded on the week. So it's pretty much all today. Now, the OI is about 15,000, so it could be someone getting the heck out of Dodge here, but intriguing stuff nonetheless. I would not have guessed the two puts, but again, in October, that again shows you where we are right now from a price perspective out here in that gas. Followed hot on its heels. This sounds more normal to me. The March three puts. This is kind of along the lines of what I expected. About 12,600 of these going up this week, so it's a pretty close battle. But the two puts in October are taking the cake right now by 200 contracts. Almost 6,000 of these three puts have gone up today. 4,000 on Tuesday, 2,500 on Wednesday. It's been opening all week long. Then again, the OI is over 18,000, so it is possible. So a lot of paper going up out there today on the three puts. So three puts in March, I can can certainly see an argument for that. The two puts all the way out in October. Then again, if this seasonality continues... October, though, usually a time when NatCast is starting to maybe catch a bit of a bit. So that's, that's intriguing out there. Uh, also behind it, we see about 8,500 for number three of the seven calls. So it's not all puts all the time. It's just mostly puts. Uh, the big day also today, about 4,700 today, 2,100 on Tuesday, 1,700 on Wednesday. Back and forth opening to closing on these seven calls. If you're opening on seven calls, good luck to you this week, unless you're maybe heavily overriding them out here. And then we also have action on the four half calls. That's a, a little bit closer to home. 7,000 of those this week. Uh, the big day again today. All this Nat Gas action is going up today. Listen, 4,600 of those as well. So it looks like it might be a four half seven vertical going up here in, in March. Maybe taking the sevens off and rolling them down to the four halves. I could certainly see an argument for that. And the, the volume lines up almost exactly 4,600 of each. So. It's the old, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, chances are it's probably a duck. So someone probably taken off of the OI there. And again, looking at how the OI stacks up, there's about almost 8,000 open of the sevens, only 3,800 open of the four halves. So clearly opening paper on the four halves, that's also reinforces the fact that it probably is a roll down. And again, can you blame them? Hopefully they had some value left in those sevens to take off. But if they bought those sevens looking for, or planning against a move down those ones at least on the sevens they're at least wearing it but if they're hey if they're shorting the heck out of this and maybe bought the calls to protect themselves maybe they're laughing all the way to the bank also two thousand of the four halves trading on tuesday about 500 on wednesday total of about seven thousand interesting action out here in that gas let's see if our put strip friend is added again yeah he is he's trading them all the way out to the end of the year looks like he's doing the three strike again Around 1,900 to 2,000 times is his number this week. King stuff. Uh, looks like he kicks it off in April. The April two puts are also very active. 7,000 of those. The two puts in April, excuse me, in May, listeners. They've done 7,100. So maybe those two puts we talked about before in October, maybe it's a bit of a roll game. 28,000 open of these. Possible someone. Could be rolling out to October. There's 14, almost 15,000 open in October as well. Could be closing out there as well. Intriguing stuff. So obviously action on the three puts, the two puts this week, (laughs) and then some scattered calls. Probably a roll down from the seven to the four halves out there in March. As we keep on rolling, listeners, what else was lighting up our tape out here this week? We had a lot of our friends out here, the frequent offenders, uh, that's pretty much it for energy this week, unless we want to sink our teeth into heating oil. Not a lot really going on out there. So I think instead, we'll make our first foray out to crypto for the new year. It's time to explore the volatile world of Bitcoin, Ether, and more. It's time to talk about crypto. All right, everybody, welcome to uh, the wild world of cryptocurrencies. You know where to find it. You have its own drop down here just for you listeners. Go out of that energy, pop up one asset class to crypto. Then we're going to hang out in the Bitcoin. Of course, didn't get a chance to do crypto rundown this week because off for the holiday. So a good chance to check in on it here. I know there's a lot of crossover between the crypto rundown and Twifo in our audience listeners. And right now, 
Actually, a pretty decently active week for the big Bitcoin options over there at CME. Listen, this is a product that you know has struggled to gain traction. By the way, right now, Bitcoin hanging out 16855 So still north of the 16000 level. We have that poll going on right now on Twitter, listeners. Where would you rather buy a 10% out of the money call expiring at the end of the year? The S&P, VIX, Bitcoin, or WTI? Get over there and vote if you haven't already. It's pretty contentious right now between WTI and SBX, but maybe you want VIX, maybe you want Bitcoin. Go make your voice heard. At Options is the place to go do it. Right now, nearly 3,000 contracts going up in the big, the 5X multiplier Bitcoin options. That's nothing to sneeze at, including the 10,000 puts listeners have gone up 400 times this week. All today. It looks like it's the... February 10,000, 12,000 put vertical went up 400 times today. So that's 800 of your contracts right there. Uh, looks like it's all opening too. It's not a lot of OI to speak of. So someone opening that put vertical, that 2,000 point wide vertical 400 times today, by the way. Let's see. What is, what is your vol out there right now in the big Bitcoin options? You had about a 47 and a half in this February contract where this action is going up right now. That's off nearly seven points this week. It's pretty light for Bitcoin, Bob. If you've been following our Crypto Rundown show, you know we've gotten much higher than that and have been much higher than that for quite some time. Uh, Skew-wise, the put's starting to get a bit again. 8.5% bid last week, almost 14% bid this week, 13.7% bid. The calls last week, 5.4% cheap. This week, 6.9% cheap. Calls cheap, puts bid. This is very much a, an equity skew. And also, if you've been listening to Crypto Rundown for a long time, you know that's Kind of the inverse of the type of skew we used to see out there all the time in crypto. It was always bid to the calls. Nobody wanted the puts. Last year, kind of changing things up out there a little bit. Since we're talking crypto, I know a lot of you folks like to hang out in the micro side as well. Let's go see if anything's lighting it up in the micro Bitcoin. And yet again, the answer is no. Nearly 3,000 this week in the giant, the 5X Bitcoin contracts. 45 in the micro. Just these things cannot catch fire. I've heard a lot of different reasons as to why that might be. Uh, the margin requirements is a big one. So for whatever reason, they keep reducing the size to make it more palatable to a lot of retail out there. But the retail still are not coming in to this. There's, there's more going on in the big one now than there are in the micro. That's that's a little surprising. Let's check in on our old friend Ether quickly as well. Ether. Uh, slinging around a little bit, 1251 right now, up about five and a quarter percent since Monday. Uh, the big contracts looking kind of light, only 109 on the tape. Uh, the micro ether, they did have some spurts of activity out there. Seems like they've kind of fallen by the wayside as well. Only 50 on the tape this week. Go out to last week really quickly and see if we can find any more paper. 460. So, yeah, the last few weeks, last month, that volume has kind of dried up as well. I mean, it is a seasonally light time, but still. There were times where we saw 12,000, 15,000, 17,000 contracts going up. So not quite the case out there in Ether. There you go, all you crypto heads. Didn't get a crypto rundown this week. Got a little bit of a taste of it out here right now. I know we got some rates fans out there. The 30-year, the ultra 30-year, and the ultra 10-year all dominating our light side this week. So I guess we'll head out to rates next. The Fed, the yield curve, inflation fears. How are they impacting options activity and volatility in your favorite interest rate products? Let's find out as we explore the world of rates. All right, everybody, welcome to the wonderful world of rates. Pop out of that crypto asset class, drop down one, two, three, four slots to interest rates, and we're going to go to the product family U.S. rates. We're going to go all the way out to the end of the yield curve because that's what's lighting up our tape this week. We're going to go all the way out to the 30 year listeners. How much paper going up in the 30 year? 280,000 contracts. So nothing to sneeze at. It's also not north of 2 million like the 10 year, but a very active contract. Nonetheless, let's see what's going on out here. Now, when we're talking vol, rates complex, not normally the place you go for it, but you're getting a little bit more vol on the tape out here in the 30 year, which is interesting. Such a long dated contract listeners and yet uh, intriguing stuff afoot we're seeing vols in these front contracts again these are in the weeklies uh, but of a 16 to a 21 that's a lot of vol <laughs> for a rates product 
you get a little bit farther out down the term structure, that's still about a 13 and a half. So we're used to seeing five, six, seven for balls on the rates complex. So this is, this is in the teens. That's nothing to sneeze at out here. How much paper? Like we said, 280,000 contracts, 56% of that going up in the February contract this week. So we'll be hanging out out there. Uh, where is the 30 right now? 127.2 up about 2.09 points or about 1.8% just since the start of this week. And again, such a light week to the upside. That's enough to get you in our light side movers and shakers this week. The vol out there, 13.8. So pretty much unched on the week. Again, that's a fair amount of juice for the rates complex out there. You wise, let's see if we have any evolution on the skew front out here. Last week, the puts 3.7% bid. This week, 4.4% bid. The calls, 1.9% cheap. This week, 3.1% percent cheap so intriguing stuff out there puts bid calls offered to a modest degree so you got a modest bit of equity skew going on out here still intriguing nonetheless rates have been moving almost in lockstep with equities for a lot of last year so it makes sense we might see a similar skew out there even though that is starting to shake up a little bit now in terms of action what is the big dog out here i said we had about a 127.2 and it is the 124 even puts doing 20,400 contracts. That was the big dog this week, including 9,800 today and 9,300 yesterday, 1,300 on Tuesday, closing on Tuesday, opening on Wednesday. We don't know about today, but there's about 13,000 contracts open on the strike. So there's a chance it could be closing or they could be piling in more here. looks like actually it might've been a vertical going up on Wednesday because 9,800 of the 120 puts also went up. That vertical could have gone up about 9,000 times. So that goes opening on the 124s, closing on the 120s. So in that case, they would have been rolling up around 9,000 times, which is also worth noting. The 120 puts are also our number two most active contract with about 16,000 contracts. This week, again, the big day was Wednesday. Tuesday, we saw 4,200 going up, mostly opening there, and about 1,800 only going up today. So yesterday, a pretty active day. For the 124 and 120 puts, each of those doing nearly 10,000 contracts. Outside of that, looks like it is the 122 puts. So splitting those uprights there, doing about 12,000 contracts. Uh, The big day for those, the volume lines up nicely with the 124 puts on Wednesday. But the big day for those is today. They did 9,300 as well. So the same size as on Wednesday in the 124 puts, but they did it today. So intriguing, obviously not related paper, just looks, (laughs) lines up nicely, but not on the right day, listeners. The rest of the week kind of light, 2,000 on Tuesday, not much going up yesterday. So intriguing stuff, late paper here, the 122 puts, but still enough for almost 12,000. And the number three spot out here, you know, we don't get out to the 30 year very often, listeners. It's kind of fun to sink our teeth into this. Let's look around really quickly, see if we see any other interesting and or aberrant paper before we roll on. It seems like it's all in this Feb contract, listeners. We got the 130s, the calls went up 8,500 times. This week, the big day was Wednesday, 4,600 on Wednesday. We have the 133 calls going up 8,200 times. The big day for those also Wednesday, 3,300. Doesn't look like it was a vertical. Looks like that was just the active day out there. Almost 3,000 going up today on the 133 calls about 2,000 on Tuesday. So both the 130s and 133s doing between 8,200 and 8,400 contracts. Active week out here for the 30-year. Again, an aspect of the term structure, an aspect of the yield curve. We don't really get a chance to sink our teeth into. All right, we've done energy. We've done nat gas, one of our frequent offenders. Did Bitcoin, another one of our frequent offenders. Let's take a quick sojourn into the ags. I just want to check on the progress of our friend out there, our third frequent offender out there in the softs. It is lumber. Let's do it. It's time to get our hands dirty exploring the latest options, trades, and trends in corn, wheat, soybeans, and more. It's time to talk ags. All right, everybody. Welcome to the ags. You know where to find these. On the drop down, it's alpha order, so it's at the top of the list. And I am joking about lumber. We're going to check it really quickly, but we're really going to sink our teeth into uh, soybeans, maybe the soybean oil, maybe the soybean meal, bit of a dealer's choice this week. I do want to take a quick sojourn the softs uh, really quickly because they have added those new shorter duration contracts, bite-sized kind of lumber contracts as an attempt to try to 
generate more interest in the retail folks in lumber. I mean, obviously, the underlying is moving. It's just not translating into options volume. So something needs to be done to make this product more attractive to retail. I'm looking right now. I don't see a lot of paper going up in these new contracts. So not quite, not quite crossing the Rubicon yet from that perspective. Hasn't really lured folks to the dark side. But an intriguing effort. I would love to see more paper and lumber. I would love to have a chance to break it down every week on the show because it certainly moves enough. Yet for whatever reason, it's just not... Not getting it done out there this week. Listen, all right, let's go out to our actual ag frequent offenders. Let's check out soybean meal first. 32,000 contracts on the tape, whereas the soybean oil, about half of that, about 16,000 contracts on the tape. So we talked the oil a few times. Let's head on out to the meal now. Listen, it's just to sink our teeth into it, pun intended, to see what's going on out there in the meal. Like I said, about 32,000 contracts on the tape. Where is soybean meal right now, you might be wondering? 466, 466 is where it's hanging out. Off about 5 bucks, or a little over 1%, uh, just on the week. Obviously, if you go back to last week's show, the meal is up 1.44%. The oil is off 6.13%. Intriguing stuff out there. In terms of action, looks like it was the March contract that did 41% 41% of the paper this week, 41% of that 32,000 contracts. So we're going to hang out out there. That contract has about 50 days to go. What is the volume? You might be wondering out here in soybean meal. Well, it's hanging out at about a nice even 26 off about three quarters of a point on the week here. In terms of skew, got a little bit of action out here. Last week, the puts were kind of flat to the at the money. This week, they are 4.3% cheap. So the puts getting cheaper. The calls, 2.7% bid last week. This week, 4.1% bid. So starting to see that nice little skew rotation there. The puts coming in, the calls getting bid up. We didn't see the call leg in uh, some of the other names we were talking about that were selling off, but we are seeing the calls get bid up a little bit in good old soybean meal. And in terms of action, what was the most active contract out here this week? It's the 450 puts. I said we're hanging out at a 466. So that is... The near at the money put strikes so makes some sense that would be lighting up the tape. Doing 3,140 contracts. The big day was Wednesday, 1,500 going up then. About 1,200 today, about 500 on Tuesday. Back and forth, opening the closing all week long. But then we fall off a bit here, 1,400 of the 430 puts going up this week. The big day for those was all Monday and all closing. 1,000 going up on Monday. The rest of the week kind of light. And then 1,300 of the 510 calls intriguing strike there uh, the big day for those was wednesday about 1200 going up then mostly opening the rest of the week kind of light uh, since we also have it on the frequent offenders let's take a quick sojourn into the oil really quick again it's not the most active of products only fifteen thousand contracts but it is on our frequent offenders here our movers and shakers this week off 6.13 percent it was number five the week before to the light side up nearly four percent so a wild couple of weeks for soybean oil. Soybean oil right now hanging out 62.45 off about 1.6%, 1.6 points, I should say, about 2.5%. Just since Monday, go back to last week's show, off over 6%. In terms of action, about 16,000 contracts, so almost exactly half of what we're seeing there in the soybean meal. And of that, about 44% going up in the Feb contract. It has about 22 days to go. So we're going to hang out out there. Uh, the vol, in case you're wondering, 26.80. So Decent amount of juice out there, off about two and a half points. Skew wise, a little bit of evolution on the calls, not a ton on the puts. The puts last week, 0.7% bid, so pretty much flat. This week, 1% bid, so picking up ever so slightly. The calls last week, though, they were nearly 6% rich to the at the money. So there was some juice out there. This week, completely flat. So all that premium has evaporated. So that's that's kind of intriguing. Let's see what's lighting it up out here this week. So we're at a 6245. It is the 62 puts. Doing about 1,600 contracts. That's your number one trade out here. So uh, pretty much 10% of the volume out here. And it's Monday. They did 700, 550 today, about 300 on Wednesday. It was, it was like they were opening pretty much all week long. So intriguing stuff out there. Followed right behind it by the 61 puts doing about 1,100 contracts. 500 and change going up yesterday and today. Similar paper, 62, 61 puts today. So maybe some vertical action. Intriguing, about 550 each on both of those strikes. Now, also, if we go out a little bit, if we go out to 
March, 63 half puts. Those also did about 1,100 contracts this week. Almost all of that on Tuesday, all opening. So uh, intriguing stuff. Someone piling into the 63 half puts in March on Tuesday. And then nothing else the rest of the week. So kind of trading by appointment. All right, everybody. That music means we've come to the end. Wait. Just the facts, ma'am, kind of addition, but with some fun extra wrinkles thrown in to kick off the year. Look at some trends. Yeah, is there a trend you'd like us to analyze? Maybe some correlation we didn't get to on the show last week? Hit us up. Let us know. We'd like to hear from you folks. Out there. I see our chat still chatting about the glory that is Portillo's. Hey, I can't blame you. Portillo's is delicious. Try the ribs next time you get there. You have to usually wait about half an hour of them to make them. But pretty freaking good. If I do say so. I saw everyone goes there for the Italian beef and all that stuff. Try the ribs. Pretty freaking good. My, my astute <laughs> out there. All right. And music, of course, listeners, means we are coming to a close this week. Don't worry. Back again tomorrow, noon central, to kick off the new year on volatility. You see how vol is shaping up. Maybe get some final thoughts for the year. We didn't get a chance to get them last week from the meatball. We're going to be joined by the once and future Dr. Vicks. Get his thoughts, his final thoughts on 2022 as well as ways looking forward from a vol perspective in the coming years. A lot of fun to be had there. Probably sneak in some trends there as well. It's always fun to kick off the new year with that data. And then we're going to kick it off after that for all you pro folks. Options oddities. First one of the new year. The Rock Lobster is back. He is rearing to go. He's already sending me messages about opening and everything else. So a lot of fun to be had for all you pro folks over there on Options Oddities tomorrow as well. Where do you get access to that? TheOptionsInsider.com slash pro is the place to go. And you already know where to go to get access to these reports we're talking about on the show and a whole bunch more. SeeMeGroup.com slash TWIFO, T-W-I-F-O. It's the name of the show. It's also the place to go if you want to check out all this data we're talking about on the show week after week. And like I said, we're really just scratching the surface of all the awesome data. You got a bit of a sampling of the extra tools there when we did the cross-asset correlation last week on the show. If you want to really sink your teeth into some awesome analytics on the futures options front, Bantix.com, B-A-N-T-I-X.com, the place to go to get all that data and a whole bunch more. They, their tagline is all the all the data you can't find all in one place, and it's really true. It's really very useful stuff. So if you're even remotely intrigued by these markets and you listen into this show, I have to guess you are, you owe it to yourself and try out the free trial at bandtix.com, B-A-N-T-I-X.com. That's going to do it for us today. We'll see you back here tomorrow for Ball Views, then Options Oddities, then back again next week all the way through to next Thursday, another episode of This Week in Future Options. Stay safe out there. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world manage risks and seize opportunities. CME Group offers the deepest and most liquid options on futures across all asset classes, including interest rates, equity indexes, foreign exchange, energy, agriculture, and metals. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. This broadcast is intended for informational and educational purposes only and does not constitute trading advice or the solicitation of purchases or sale of any futures or options. The rulebook of the applicable exchange should be consulted as the authoritative source on all current contract specifications. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. 
That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 